I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to night six of the Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Tonight we are going to do a version of one of my favorite colorways and that is the Neon Rainbow Yarn Mop. Now I call a type of colorway a yarn mop when I have dye on my fingertips and then I randomly apply it onto the yarn. This usually is not the focus of my dyeing process, although I have done that intentionally with this neon acid dye palette in the past. But I enjoy the random free placement of the colors, which gives a really fun non-repeating colorway and wanted to include something like this in the Hanukkah samplers this year. So let's go have some fun with random free-flowing neon colors. Today we are actually going to start with our 10 gram mini skeins twisted up and I am going to add all of them to this bucket. We are dyeing Wolfa Dye Force Platinum Sock and Platinum DK which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I am adding a total of 125 of these 10 gram minis into this bucket. And now we will turn on the water to start soaking them. We don't need them to be so saturated and it's okay if there's some dry spots because of our technique but we do want them wet enough that they can absorb the dye that we're going to add. And I will probably end up letting them soak for a couple of hours, but I, it's not as important as it is with some of the other techniques I've done during the 2021 Hanukkah special. Now that the five gallon bucket is a little over half full of water, I'm gonna add some white vinegar. I'm adding 500 milliliters which is approximately equal to two cups of white vinegar. Uh, this may seem like a lot of acid, but we do have a large volume of water. I add the acid based on the volume of water, not on the amount of yarn. And with fluorescent acid dyes, they do tend to take a little bit more time and need a, some of them need a little bit more acid to strike. Now, in doing this, some of these may become a little untwisted, so I will just pop that back in. But the goal is to try to keep things roughly twisted for this first step of our process. That's right, I said first step. I am going to dye the yarn in two different stages today and do a round of applying our neon colors, heat set it, then we're going to untwist these minis and combine them in groups of probably 10 or 15 on to zip ties and then do another round of dyeing. The reason for this kind of change is twofold. One, when I do this type of yarn mop with wiping dye off of my fingers onto yarn, I have really enjoyed heat setting it a little bit in the middle and then layering on more color. It gives more layers and a little bit less blending, which is really fun. But also, since I'm doing 10 gram minis, if I started with them sort of in 100 gram bundles and did the technique like I usually do, because there's an asymmetry to the process, there could be some minis with very little color at all on them. And I'd like to make sure that all of the minis for this Hanukkah sampler have at least a little bit of all of the colors. So in this first process twisted up, we will have a little bit of each color on them. Then untwisted, we will on the bundles apply more color, but this gives us a better uh, distribution just because these are uh, minis that are going into samplers. I could have done this without doing a more like two process, two step dyeing range, but there is less risk of accidentally flinging powdered dye around if I am untwisting and assembling bundles of minis uh, that have already been heat set versus not. So that's another reason why I'm going to heat set it in the middle. Here is our color palette for today using Dharma Acid Dyes in Fluorescent Fuchsia, 
fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, frozen blue, and purple pop. Now of these six colors, the one color that is not fluorescent is the frozen blue. I believe that in the set of six dyes, there are two fluorescent pigments, the yellow and the pink. And so then the orange is a, probably a combination of the two. And then both of the, the green and the purple have some kind of blue pigment in there to make them overall feel blue. But these two colors, and it really even our orange, do break beautifully so you see separation of color, which isn't necessarily our goal today specifically, but is fun. So I do find that fluorescent rainbows like this tend to lean a little bit pink. All of the tools and equipment that I am using for this video, and really any video I'm using acid dyes, is dedicated for dyeing yarn and is not used for the preparation of food. And whenever I am dealing with the dry dye powders, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Now, since for our project today, I am gonna be taking my gloved fingers, rubbing it in some dye, wiping yarn, it on the yarn and repeat multiple times. Because of this, I don't want to introduce moisture into these jars, so I'm gonna add some dye to these other containers. And since some of these fluorescent colors are so pigmented, I think that I wanna actually mix them with some citric acid. Not a lot of citric acid, but just to help me spread out the dyes a little further. And who knows, maybe we'll end up with some more speckly spots. We did pre-soak the yarn in with some vinegar. Having additional acid will not hurt, certainly. I know I tend to have a lot of leftovers <laughs> when I do this because, as I said, these dyes a little bit goes a really long way. But I do have, um, I did start with a half teaspoon of citric acid powder in these six cups. And I almost forgot to mention, but I am going to have two yarn mops on hand, which I know given that this is a yarn mop-ish technique overall is a little silly, but I'm going to start with dry skeins because as my fingers get wet from touching the yarn, I thought that maybe I'd see about using this yarn to help dry them off. And then eventually uh, they will get wet and we will use them to, for example, mop up the counter and things like that. So I'm not sure how it'll work starting with them dry, but I wanted to give it a shot. And then if that doesn't work well, then I can quickly go and pre-soak them. But we have one skein of Knit Fix Stroll, which is like the yarn we're dyeing, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and a skein of Swish DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino. Okay, now I'm gonna take some of these dyes. And so I'm taking a popsicle stick and covering the end of the popsicle stick with some powder. And that is how much I'm starting with. Uh, I might decide that I need more. The one where I'm gonna do more, and I'm gonna do two of these little popsicle sticks full is of the frozen blue, because it is the least pigmented of all of our colors. But everything else uh, is fairly intense. And so we'll see if I want more, but the nice thing with doing <laughs> these popsicle stick measurements is that should I want more or need more, it'll be fairly easy to replicate. The other nice thing is that sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the lemon and the orange, but today it's not gonna really matter if I can't tell the difference between them because everything is like randomly placed. And so I'm just going to quickly stir this up. Now, since these popsicle sticks have now been mixed with citric acid. These won't go into the containers. If I need more dye, I will get more, I will get fresh popsicle sticks. But my goal here is just to mix it up a bit, which will help me, I think, use a tiny bit less color. It'll help spread out the dye a little more. Because with some of these fluorescent dyes, if you use them at like a 1% depth of shade, that is way too intense, and you will have a lot of bleeding. 
Now, frozen is an obvious exception that you can use at much more than a 1% depth of shade. We are about ready to get started. So I am going to pop lids on these dyes uh, and then remove the yarn from the pot and get that all ready to go. Here's my little tower of pre-soaked yarn uh, that I will lay out. I did squeeze out um, most of the water so that way it is damp but not dripping. But I thought that this sight of this mountain was worth beholding. And before I uncover the dyes to start uh, adding the color onto these, I thought, oh, here's one that is a little undone. I'm just going to twist it up. I am going to lay these out in a bit of a line. And so then we can get started finger painting. And so again, I'm not concerned that some of them are a little untwisted. The goal is more so I can make sure I get at least a tiny bit of every color on every mini. And so that is the whole purpose of the two-step process today. Plus the fact that they're twisted means that if I touch it once, then the color will be in multiple spots. And so that is also pretty cool. So I am going to fill up the camera frame, which is many, with as many as I can. Okay, we still have this many left, but we are ready to start once I get my protective gear back on. To steam the yarn, I am gonna use a 12 quart pot that is stainless steel, and it has this pasta insert, which I'm gonna use as a large steamer basket. So I have like an inch or so of water at the bottom, and that is below this bottom depth for this pasta insert. And then this is where I will layer all of the minis so they can steam set. And it's not gonna matter if they're sitting on top of each other here in the pot because like color transfer and randomness is part of this in the end. I'm gonna start a little bit more zoomed in. Now the goal here is to rub the powder on my fingers so it was as though I was just speckling. And then there's a little bit left of my gloves, which I'm then going to wipe onto the minis. And you can see that as I continue to move, um, there is more wiping that I can do. And I am going and wiping my glove onto those yarn mops so that way I can remove some of that liquid from my fingers. But I, and actually I did get a little dye over there, but the goal is to try to get as a little bit of each color on all of these minis. And so rubbing it on my fingers, and I'm not bringing the powder in, but I am still wiping my fingers on and then looking through like, oh, that one didn't have very much. So this is still adding like a randomness to our color placement. And some of them will have a little bit more green, some will have a little bit less. Now the goal in doing this is not to have things in rainbow order. Uh, I better zoom back out. There we go. So you can see more of the surface. Um, the goal is to have there be like some randomness. That's why like some of them, even at this stage, have a few patches of the color and others do not. And that is not bad for the first color. I wouldn't necessarily need to do this, but I am taking my fingers and wiping them clean and then drying them back on these yarn mops before starting the next color. But now I'm gonna carry on with the rest. I feel like most often when I do this kind of technique, the yarn mop is not the one that I'm focusing on. And I have done this neon rainbow kind of effect, although differently for sure, uh, trying to do it with intent and still preserve some amount of randomness. Sort of, so when I'm wiping my fingers on, I'm looking for spots on the yarn that don't currently have color versus trying to make the color feel perfectly balanced throughout the skein. But in our case today, when you're dealing with a 10 gram mini skein, 
it's going to be really hard to make something that feels unbalanced because there's just not that many strands on each round. So even something that is a little random may still have some aspect that's repeating to it. So that is worth keeping in mind. I am really glad I mixed these dyes with citric acid because I think it's a letting me uh, spread it a tiny bit more because I think each time I put my fingers in I have a tiny bit less pigment than I would have otherwise and so I think that what we've got here even without flipping the yarn over I things are twisted I don't think that that's necessary I think we've got a really really great start uh, to this fun neon rainbow colorway wiping my hands on these yarn mops did technically work but I do think I want to go and uh, wet these mops just because it'll be easy to get dye off the edges of my fingers and then dry with a paper towel. Um, I think that that'll work a tiny bit better and then I won't need to do as much of like a little collection like I'm doing over there. This is fun, random, bright rainbow and if I take yarn in an area and flip it over, you can see that there's still a lot of white left. Now since it's twisted we will have some distribution but it looks like we have amazing coverage right now, which we do, but when we open things up, we will have an opportunity to add more color to the other side. So I am now going to pick these up, put them in that steamer basket, and I'm gonna steam set these for 30 minutes, and then we will come and deal with our mops. So I'm in a tiny bit of a conundrum because I want to, oh, I know what I'll do. There's some dye in the counter I wanna wipe up, um, and I don't wanna soak it into the like leftover kind of combo yet. So I'm gonna take just some water, get just an end of the yarn in, and then we're gonna come and wipe up. There's not a ton of extra dye on the counter, but we will do a preliminary wiping and then I'll wipe this down so then we can talk more about what we're gonna do with these mops. This basin has a lot of the pre-soaked liquid in it. I'm gonna add this little bit that was rinsed from my fingertips. And now, carefully, one at a time, I'm gonna take these yarn mops from our yarn mopping and soak them in. We will likely see some spread of some of these colors that are on here already, but now we will have a wet or at least damp basis for the rest of the project. And it's rinsing off, oh dear, our toothpicks. Toothpicks. What are these things called? Popsicle sticks. There was not a ton of pigment left. There was some though. And so we've got this almost candy-like start to our project. And ironically, blue is a color that tends to strike. Uh, it's one of the colors that strikes the fastest of all these colors, but I'm seeing some blue here in this residual liquid. Anyway, these yarn mops now will be wet. And since the minis, I'm not like turning them when I'm wiping on them, I'll use this to get color off the edges of the fingers and then dry with the paper towel. One thing I didn't do today was separate the fingering from the DK weight yarn. So that's something I'm probably gonna have to do once the yarn has dried. That was not my smartest move, uh, but I do like that it means that I really am treating the fingering and DK the same. I think that uh, sometimes with DK yarn, because there's less yardage, uh, I am apt to add, a, not less, but it just doesn't feel like it needs as many wipes as the fingering weight, which feels like there's more surface area and more to cover. So everything is all mixed together today. Once I finished adding the color on to this second set, I just put it on top of what I had done already. I'm not gonna start a timer, I think, until I have all the yarn in the pot. Uh, but then I went and I did the same thing on, I think, a third and final round off camera. Here are 
the yarn mops and they are way more subtle than the minis because there's not as much dye there and so therefore uh, as I'm wiping there's not a ton going on here but so after I finish like a section I sort of pat off the excess dye here and then dry them with the paper towel but yeah now we can go look at the steamer basket with all of the yarn in it and actually I'm gonna go pop these in top and then finally wait 30 minutes actually though I'm gonna put them on top after I finish round three then I'll finally set the timer all of the yarn has been in the steamer basket now for 30 minutes and oh good it is warm here are the two mops where they are right now and then we have the rest of our minis which do need to cool off before we can do really anything but what I can do first is remove this basket and set it aside so at least it can start cooling a bit <laughs> eventually I will remove the yarn and spread it out but I did want to show off that the uh, bottom of the dye bath there is no color there so there wasn't enough moisture that it came up and sort of caused some of the color to drip down but that being said we may end up noticing a difference between the minis that we have here on top and the ones that are more to the bottom. And so we may as well take a look at this right now. So layering these minis together this way in the pot means that we could have some more color transfer from mini to mini, but that is okay. That's part of the this kind of colorway. So I'm sort of spreading them out a little bit and I'm gonna set this aside so it can, it doesn't need to cool completely, but it does need to cool enough so then I can comfortably handle it. Okay, and we are now approaching the bottom and you know, it doesn't look to me like I see significant spread. These definitely feel more wet. Like if I lift them up, they're clearly dripping, but these colors did strike quickly enough so that as it became saturated with water that didn't cause a lot of color to spread. And by spread, I mean look at the times where sometimes I may speckle onto yarn that may or may not have acid in it yet and then submerge that. Sometimes some of the color strikes where it first landed on the yarn even with no additional acid, but some of it isn't bound yet and so can kind of go into solution and then bind onto the yarn. So there was a chance we could have seen more spread than what we did. But given that we not only had the citric acid, but we also soaked the yarn in vinegar, I think that that worked in our favor for getting some good consistency with this first round. So now we're gonna let things cool off and once it's cool enough that I can comfortably handle it without any risk of burning, we'll start opening these up and assembling them into bundles for us to dye again. The minis have all cooled considerably and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and open up a few. So again, we have a little bit of every color on each one and opening it, you can see that we do have lots of white space left and actually maybe it's hard to see, but we do have small patches of each of these colors, which are smaller because of the twisting than it may have been otherwise. And I think one thing I would like to do is to go through, and as I'm looking closely, and to try to separate them into fingering versus DK now while they are still twisted. Um, but I will also double check. So here is a DK one right here. Let me open this one up. Those ones have all been fingering, but the DK, the DK has very, very similar feelings. There is some variety in the um, depth of each of the colors, but. I am gonna go divide all these into fingering versus DK, um, and then bundle them in groups of 10 to 15. As I am creating these bundles and sort of twisting them up, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are amazing. I love the confetti neon appearance. 
But I need to remind myself that the reason, one of the reasons why this looks so awesome with the distribution of colors is that when you have 10 minis with the randomly placed colors put together, then they're all at different orientations and so that gives us this more confetti feel. So one skein has a little bit of that feel for sure, but not nearly, eh, maybe it does, maybe it does. I still want to, oh, I don't know. Guys, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna finish setting these up. All right, here are four of our mops. And I think to try to get some kind of color like this with these more spread out splotches, you could do that taking your dye mix with, mix with citric acid and do tiny little applications randomly around. So I think at some point, and who knows, maybe that'll come soon in a Dye Pot Weekly episode, I think that I would like to try to get yarn that looked like this uh, where we are here, but starting with full 100 gram skeins versus using these uh, 10 gram minis. Um, but now we're gonna come and we are gonna wipe the colors on. I was debating between doing one set at a time with all six colors, but I think that what I'm going to do is with each of the colors, I am going to do two like big like wipes of each color on each set, at least to start with. I really need to be like, Rebecca, do not overthink this. It is really, really easy to overthink this. So I'm starting with, I don't know, pink or purple, rubbing it on to my gloves and I don't think it's even sticking, but rubbing it onto my gloves and then coming in. And oh, there is another spot where I can go. And I do want to dry my fingers in between, in between takes. And so I don't know, and I will try to wipe it all off all over. I don't know if I am going to think that doing this twice is gonna be good enough. It's okay if some of it ends up on some more fingers. We are coming in and doing the more, oh, that was just one. <laughs> the more traditional yarn moppy application. And so what I don't know here, um, and what's gonna be different is, I don't know how much I'm getting oh, across all of our minis or what. And so that's why, uh, because sometimes of the way things are randomly placed all around, that's why we started with adding color onto all of them at the beginning. I'm just looking for area where there's not very much color. And then drying off a bit. I did notice some moisture going into our dyes um, earlier. But the goal is to try to have my hands be dryish, because if it, if it gets too wet, then we really start to like create a paste. But then you really get start to get all over. But the nice thing about this is that as we layer colors, they're really going to layer on top of each other. So I do have some amount of control over where things are placed. And for example, I don't have to, I can try to avoid getting, say our pink on our green. But also if that happens, it's not a huge deal. Let's go on and do the rest of the colors. So here is where we are versus that is more of where we started. So I think both are beautiful and I'm very happy with this layered look. 
But now I'm gonna pop this into the steam her basket and go ahead and do the rest off camera. I'm a little bit unsure if there is a color that I skipped when I did this. I didn't have the best organization, but I do think I hit them all. But if I missed one, <laughs> let me know down below and I'll try to be more organized for the next batch. And as for our yarn mops, I will come and before we go on to the next batch, come and just clean up a little bit of the powder that is on the surface. Not using them nearly as much now as I did uh, in the previous rounds, but they will still probably pick up a little bit more color. The yarn mops mops. <laughs> Story time. I added the rest of everything into the pot and I was like, to be safe, let's make sure there's still plenty of water in here. And there wasn't. It was dry. I didn't film any of this because I went to cool off the pot, <laughs> clean the pot. But thankfully, because there's enough space between the insert and the bottom, the yarn, I took all the yarn out of the steamer. The yarn is fine. There are no black marks on the whole insert at all. And the yarn does not smell like scorched yarn. So of course, We'll be inspecting it closely as I wash it, but I think that this is officially the closest I've come to scorching yarn ever. And I know it'll happen someday, and I will be really, really, really sad because I really like this yarn, but the yarn is fine. <laughs> I just wanted to share that this happened, but I didn't film it because I was dealing with mitigating it and I didn't run and get the camera. But uh, the yarn is fine. The house doesn't smell like burning. I just, I think I caught it like right away because the pot was also really steamy. I think that there was enough yarn that's wet in there that that kept the yarn from burning or anything. I don't know if the yarn would burn if it wasn't on the bottom. If the yarn was in the bottom of the pot, that would have burnt for sure. But phew, hopefully my pot will be okay. I've already scrubbed it a bit, but I want to finish this. So uh, yeah, it might just have some uh, character to it now. <laughs> Oh man! The 30 minutes are up. I'm gonna turn off the heat and we've got plenty of water in our pot. I'm actually gonna leave the yarn in here for a little bit. It'll stay steamy for a little bit longer. It does take longer for the top to heat up and the bottom, well that yarn's been in there for a while. But anyway, in a little while I will remove the yarn so it can cool completely so then we can wash it. But a little bit of extra time isn't gonna hurt it, especially with the heat off. <laughs> it's time to wash our yarn, and I'm thrilled to report that all the yarn smells like yarn. <laughs> Nothing smells burnt. Thank goodness I caught that quickly. But oh my gosh, aren't these colors just like a candy cane of fun? And I think that we have like green and pink and stuff so close together because of the double application of color. Um, otherwise things may have blended a bit more. Like here, we've got blue speckles in with the pink. I don't know. It is very, very fun. As much as I love the subtlety of that first version, I definitely want to try to, and I'm gonna add some dish soap, recreate that that more subtle rainbow speckled on a full skein. I imagine that video will be out shortly. I definitely would want to wait until after this video comes out. Uh, but I am very, very happy with how bright neon and rainbow this feels. There are very, very Lisa Frank vibes. Well, it would be more so if I set this and then added some black speckles on it. Now, if that's something you want me to do, to sort of recreate um, like this random all over neon rainbow kind of colorway and then add black speckles, let me know down in the comments below. But I am not seeing any bleeding, which is fantastic and what we want to see. Now, I will pay attention to all of the yarn we're washing and the yarn mops and I will check back in if anything bleeds. But uh, 
this turned out, <laughs> sorry, this only, this turned out absolutely fantastic. So now I'm gonna go put this yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can come back and look at the finished yarn. This worked so unbelievably well. Yes, we have variation. You can see we have some that are much more pink over on the left, but this is part of the beauty of this yarn moppy type technique. It's that the amount of color and the placement is so random. But adding that little bit of color to the twisted skeins first and then layering on more color worked amazing because everything still feels bright and neon and rainbow and nothing feels muddy, which I am so happy about. There is gonna be a variation skein to skein. No too many skeins will be exactly identical. But again, this is a random kind of technique. The goal is to have something non-pooling and random and fun. And I'm just so happy that I know every single skein should have at least a speck <laughs> of every single one of these six neon colors. And I'm just thrilled. It is fun to have yarn mops when we're doing a yarn mop based technique. And here, we have almost a neon pastel colorway because most of the dye that we were using uh, came off onto our yarn directly. And these we use to mop up the countertops and do a little bit off of the fingers. They are more subtle than the Hanukkah colorway we created, but still very, very beautiful and fun. I think playing with this combination of six colors is one of my favorites <laughs> to play with ever. And so I'm excited to explore the, all of these techniques more. We are back in my closet, which <laughs> we have some light bleeding in. It's otherwise the only place dark enough. And now look at this glory. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. I never get tired of seeing fluorescent colors under a black light. The colors that glow the brightest are the yellow and orange. That fluorescent yellow is just super, super bright. Uh, and of course that yellow I think is also in radioactive, so we see that. The pink is not quite as bright, but still very, very present. And in some cases you do see orange where those two overlap but uh, the blue is not fluorescent and none of it really looks super green <laughs> or purple either because I think that those blue pigments that aren't fluorescent uh, don't really show up when we use the black light. But anyway, now let's go twist up all of these minis. And here is all of the yarn. I think that twisted up you can sort of see that some are a little bit more pink leaning and others feel Eh, I guess almost a little bit more yellow leaning. I think it depends on, well, it depended on just how I wiped my fingers onto them because I would say that each bundle that I had feels fairly consistent uh, overall. But these neons make me so happy. Oh my goodness, I, they just make me smile so much. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you're not tired of me playing with these neon rainbow colors because honestly it's one of my favorite color combinations and there is another video coming out this year with this combination and likely will be many others next year as well because I just love them so much they make me so happy. Whether or not you're tired of neon rainbows please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. During Hanukkah, there are a lot of videos that come out, regularly scheduled programming in the morning, and a nightly video, which actually extends a few days beyond Hanukkah, and so it's all a lot of fun and you don't want to miss it. And if you love the yarn that I dye, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in my videos and it's a lot of fun and a great way to get some fun yarn and support the content here at the same time. We had a bit of an oopsie from this project where my pot ran nearly dry and it could have destroyed all of the yarn and I know that as I continue to die, I am going to make more mistakes 
and have more successes and wins or lucky breaks. And I'm really hoping to share all of this journey with you because I think that mistakes are a good way for all of us to learn, and that includes myself. Double checking there's enough water in your steamer basket is important. <laughs> and so while there may be things that are feel more urgent, so therefore I don't have the camera out, I do hope to continue to share my flaws because I think that that's just as important as all of the wins. But anyway, what kind of colorway do you think I am going to dye up tomorrow night for night seven of the Kevinitz Hanukkah special? Do you have any predictions? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.